love to see your frustrated face, but it's probably too pitiful, so I'll refrain. I know it's awkward to see you, so why don't you go hide in the bathroom? The woman on the phone laughs hysterically and mocks me. I hate this woman more than anyone in the world. No, in the entire universe. Thirteen years ago, this woman stole my husband from me. I want to cut ties with her, but it's quite difficult. Because sadly, this woman is my own sister. I chuckled as I held the phone to my ear for a while after it was unilaterally disconnected. My name is Kate, a 37-year-old divorcee. My married life fell apart in just half a year, and it's all because of my sister with a rotten character. I have a fraternal twin sister. Her name is Carly. Our appearance is so identical that even longtime friends mistake us for each other. However, despite our similar looks, our personalities are completely different. I'm more on the quiet side, but Carly was an active class president type. I excel academically, while Carly has better athletic abilities. Carly has a personality of speaking her mind immediately. You manage to wear such tacky clothes so well. We have the same face, so people will think I'm the one who looks tacky. It's the worst. Our sisterly relationship is not as good as it seems. It's fine within the confines of our home, but trouble always seems to follow my sister Carly. Back in our student days, what's your deal hitting on my boyfriend? I often found myself being confronted by girls from other schools on my way home. Of course, I had no personal connection to them. Ugh, not again, Carly. Whenever Carly developed an interest in someone, she would shamelessly pursue them, regardless of whether they already had a girlfriend. I do think men can be awful, but my sister is the worst. And here I am, mistaken for her, suffering the consequences. What's more, she easily grows bored and breaks up with them, sometimes within just a week. It's truly exasperating. Carly, can't you stop this already? Don't you think about the feelings of the other person's girlfriend? And I'm also bothered by all of this. In response to my words, I'm afraid of the cynicism of unattractive women. Well, what about your man? Murphy, right? He's so plain and I don't think there's any worry of him cheating. You can relax, he's out of the question for me. She proceeded to belittle my boyfriend. This man, Murphy, is the despicable ex-husband who callously abandoned me 13 years ago. We got to know each other at the same cram school and became close. He was more on the quiet side and being with him brought me a sense of peace. His mother was a renowned fortune teller, running her own fortune telling establishment. We graduated from the same university and decided to get married two years later. However, just six months after our marriage, Please, just divorce me. I've reached my limit. You should know the reason, right? He hands me the divorce papers. Sitting next to Murphy with a triumphant expression on her face is my sister, Carly. It all came as such a sudden shock. Huh? Sorry? I don't understand. Did I do something? I have no recollection. In response to my words, my husband slams the desk. What? You've been cheating on me. Can you still say that even after seeing this? Among the several photos lined up on the desk, there were images of a man and a woman entering a hotel together, looking affectionate. But from my perspective, I was simply being shown pictures of my sister, Carly, entering a hotel with an unfamiliar man. I couldn't understand all the meaning behind Murphy's words. The man in the photos is probably just one of Carly's flings. No, no, this is Carly, it's not me. In that moment, my sister Carly bursts into tears. Kate, stop this. It's painful to re deceive Murphy. To my sister's words, Murphy responds, Carly, I'll be fine. You're so kind. Thank you. What are we being shown here? My ex-husband glared at me tightly and began blathering on about a fictional story that never happened. Apparently, I was having an affair and threatened my sister because I didn't want to be found out. According to him, I borrowed clothes from my sister, disguising myself as her and constantly engaged in hotel affairs with various partners. 
Such an outrageous woman, he claims. My ex-husband completely believes this absurd tale he heard from my sister. I heard from Carly that you have always had a bad habit of being involved with multiple men. It seems you were even seeing other men while you were with me. In response to my enraged ex-husband, Hey, are you seriously saying that? Do you believe the stories of my sister whom you've known for only about six months more than me? Whom you've spent years with? Are you sane? Are you stupid? My calm response seemed to displease him as my ex-husband simply glared at me. You claimed it was out of the question, but I never imagined you would go after Murphy. Even though you have the same face, your personalities are completely different. Honestly, you lack charm. Carly would listen to my complaints with a smile. She was so endearing. Maybe I made a mistake in choosing you as my marriage partner. He said such things. Carly, who continued to feign crying, had a smile on her face. As Carly became a working adult, her habit of being involved with men didn't change. But her criteria for targeting men has shifted compared to our student days. She prioritized status and money over appearance, and Murphy worked for a major company, and his family was reasonably well off. Perhaps she had her eyes on those factors from the time of our marriage proposal. It turns out that my ex-husband was completely fooled by my sister's poor acting skills. I couldn't believe that my former long-term partner could be so foolish, and I felt my feelings quickly cool down. You two are the worst, you know. Do whatever you want. Just never appear in front of me again. Tears threatened to, to fall, but I held them back desperately. I signed the divorce papers handed to me on the spot and slammed them back at the two of them. It's my sister who is the only one who has a devious mind. It seems she and Murphy haven't yet become involved romantically. Claiming alimony from him would also be challenging. However, if these two could disappear from my life, I no longer cared about money. Afterward, I returned to my parents' home, but they were furious at my sister's actions and declared their disownment. As for the reaction of the person in question, Oh, whatever. If you ever need help with money, don't come to me or anything. Bye then. Even our own parents treated her with such disdain. I heard from a friend that my ex-husband and sister got married just three months after the divorce. I was so disgusted that I couldn't even cry. I didn't feel anything anymore. For the past 13 years, I haven't seen my sister and her husband. But one day, I received a call on my phone from a payphone. Since it was work-related, I answered it. Hello, Kate. I immediately recognized the voice on the other end of the line. I don't know what kind of nerve you have to contact me. In response to my words, my sister Carly chuckled softly. Are you still holding a grudge? You're still as gloomy as ever, Kate. Well, never mind that. I have a favor to ask you. My sister continued talking without showing any remorse for the past. I'm pregnant. Huh? The father, of course, is Murphy, the one you loved so much. So, I was thinking of announcing it to our parents, as it's their first grandchild. But I doubt those strict parents would listen if I told them directly. So tell them for me. She boldly gave me an order, even though she's been disowned. And what makes you think you can say such audacious things when you've been cut off? I retorted, but Carly had a comeback. And what about you? How many years has it been since then? It's been 13 years. 13 years? I think you're the only one who still holds a grudge. You're probably still living alone in our parents' house, right? I'll be the one to show them a grandchild in your place. She mocked me. This girl is a genius when it comes to irritating people. I thought that while remaining silent, and then Carly continued. I'd love to see your frustrated face, but I guess it's pitiful, so I'll refrain. It would be awkward to me, so why don't you hide in the bathroom or something? She said that while laughing hysterically. And then... I'll come over this weekend. Take care. With that, my sister unilaterally ended the call. 
I held the disconnected phone to my ear for a while and chuckled softly. On that weekend, while I was enjoying a quiet time at home, my smartphone rang. It was a call from a public telephone. I assumed it was my sister. Reluctantly, I answered the call. Hey, unlock the call blocking already, she yelled. What's wrong with blocking calls from someone I don't want to hear from? Isn't that the purpose of call blocking? Oh, I see. Maybe you don't understand because you're not that bright. I chuckled in contempt. In response to her irritation, I heard a few cracking sounds over the phone. I went through the trouble of coming here and no one's home? I told you I was coming today. Huh? Were you serious about that? I thought it was a joke. Besides, you unilaterally hung up the phone, so I didn't say anything, but I no longer live there. I could sense anger and slight agitation in my sister's voice as she spoke. It seemed like she was standing in front of our former house, although nobody lived there anymore. Thinking about the disturbance it would cause to the neighbors if she continued to create a scene, I gave her my current address and hung up the phone. After waiting for about an hour, the intercom rang, and when I answered it, Carly and my ex-husband Murphy were standing there with displeased faces. Carly immediately said, Don't get too cocky. And what are you doing here? Why are you living in such a nice apartment? She yelled at me with bloodshot eyes. It was understandable that my sister was surprised. This place was relatively new and was in good location. The rent was also decent. It wasn't a super luxurious apartment, but it was a nice property. Ignoring Carly's excitement, I said, It's annoying and disruptive there, so why don't you come up? I led them to my apartment, and Carly seemed surprised by the spaciousness. Seeing her frustrated expression, I couldn't help but chuckle. Inside the living room, our mother was sitting on the sofa silently observing my sister. Without uttering a word, she continued to gaze at Carly. So you said you had something to discuss today, right? I'm not bothered by it, but if I'm in the way, should I hide in the bathroom? I sarcastically remarked. Never mind, I don't care anymore. Carly glared at me. And then she approached our mother and said, Mom, it's been a while. I'm pregnant. That's why I wanted to talk today. I hope you'll let us stay here as a couple for a while. Without any sense of remorse for the past, my sister continued speaking. Huh? You want me to live with you guys? No way, that's impossible. Have you forgotten what you did to me in the past? It's out of the question. Before I could finish my words, Kate, just shut up. Besides, isn't this house still under dad's name? You're an unmarried woman who couldn't even remarry at your age and are just leeching off our parents. Further adding insult to injury, Thanks for your hard work until now. From now on, Murphy and I will take care of our parents' needs while living here together. Can you leave? And what about Dad? Is he at work? My patience had reached its limit with my sisters smirking and laughing. However, it was our mother, who had been silently listening all along, who spoke up before me. If it's about your father, he passed away. My mother muttered just those words. My parents are very serious people. And even though it was Carly, my sister, who was entirely at fault for the divorce 13 years ago, my parents have been apologizing to me all along. Especially my father. Oh, I should have done better. It must have been my poor parenting. I'm sorry, Kate. I'm sorry. He became increasingly depressed, to the point where it was difficult for him to continue working. During that time, both my father and mother were still in their early 50s and our living expenses were supported by my income and my mother's part-time job. After a while, my father was diagnosed with cancer and passed away ten years ago. Right before his passing, my father said, Please, don't contact Carly about this. If she shows up at my funeral, I feel like I won't be able to go to heaven. True to his words, neither my mother nor I contacted my sister. We moved into this house about five years ago. It was because my mother's health deteriorated due to work-related strain. We considered renovating our family home, but it was located on a hill, and the act of climbing the slope with my mother's condition would have been difficult. That's why we decided to move to this wheelchair-accessible property. Since we started living here, my mother said that her mobility has improved significantly. I thought I was calmly explaining this matter, but when I recalled my father's presence before he passed away, tears welled up. 
I believe my mother felt the same way. There were traces of tears in her eyes as well. However, my sister Carly's reaction to my story was, in a sense, as expected. Even if you tell me now, it's too late. And it's not my fault that Dad got sick, is it? Besides, you're able to live in such a nice place because of Dad's inheritance, right? It's unfair. What about my share? Don't I have the right to inherit too? Carly said these absurd things. Without missing a beat, Mother responded. Inheritance? There's no such thing. You only came crying to us when you got into trouble with your foolish actions before getting married. How many times did you have to pay alimony to the wives of the married men you got involved with? Living with someone who strayed from a right path like you? This is no joke. Don't you dare mock us. It was the first time both my sister and I had witnessed Mother in such a furious state. Perhaps realizing the tense atmosphere, my sister fell completely silent. And then Murphy, my former husband, who had been quiet like a doll until then, spoke up. Carly, maybe you've been deceiving me all along. My life has been a mess since I married you. You're reckless with money and don't do any housework. I had a chance to meet someone from our high school and they all warned me not to marry you, the twin sister. They said it was a terrible idea. I nearly burst out laughing at my ex-husband's words. It's quite something that he managed to stay married to her for 13 years. Furthermore, he approached me and said, Kate, I've regretted our separation for a long time. Would you consider starting over together here? Let's let bygones be bygones. As he said that, he gently reached out to touch my shoulders, sending shivers down my spine. No way, it's disgusting. Let bygones be bygones? Who are you kidding? And it's not something you should be saying in the first place. Just as I was about to deflect his touch, the door of the adjacent room swung open forcefully. Could you please not touch her with your dirty hands? Suddenly a man appeared, surprising both of them with wide-eyed astonishment. Who's that? Ignoring my sister's mutter, I said, I told you to stay hidden and not get involved. In response to my words, Richard said, I had to intervene because he was about to touch you, Kate. Besides, having a third party present can help with the discussion. That might be true, but... This is my husband, Richard. And also, Ryan, come here. This is my eight-year-old son, Ryan. I called out to my son, who had been peeking from the shadow of the door. He stared at my sister and her husband with a piercing gaze as if he had overheard some of their argument. Huh? You got remarried? That's unbelievable, why? My sister was more surprised than anyone to learn that I had a husband and a son. Murphy, my ex-husband, also seemed to be at a loss for words, his mouth opening and closing like a fish. Why? How many years do you think have passed since then? It's been 13 years. 13 years! Even though so much time has passed, you two haven't changed a bit. It's astonishing. Oh well, at least you've aged significantly in appearance. My sarcastic words made their faces turn red. I met my current husband, Richard, shortly after my father passed away. We worked together and met a few times a year, but one day he asked me out. I said, I'm a divorcee. When I declined, he asked me again, saying, Does being divorced mean you can't be happy? A year later, we got married, and the following year, our son Ryan was born. My husband treated my mother very well, and he never showed any reluctance towards living together. Perhaps it was because his parents, my in-laws, were already living with his brother and sister-in-law. I feel relieved because you're with Richard, she said, showing her support. Richard suggested moving to our current house because he was worried about my mother's mobility. Facing the two standing still, I said, My mother and I have our current life. Please, don't interfere. And Carly, you claimed to be pregnant. How many months along are you? Seeing the flustered reactions of the two, it seemed that the pregnancy was also a lie. Although Murphy and I were only married for half a year, I never got pregnant. That became a reason for my ex-mother-in-law to make snide remarks. And the fact that my sister isn't pregnant means that's how it is, I suppose. 
It seems that my sister and my ex-mother-in-law both having a bad nature got along well. Unable to withstand the harsh stares from our family, the two of them left the house as if fleeing. I've heard the story, but is she really your biological sister? Her face does resemble yours, but her character is something else entirely. Anyway, I guess this settles the matter. Speaking with a smile, my husband said that. Hmm, I'm not so sure. I replied with a wry smile. That evening, something happened. The intercom kept ringing continuously. Looking at the monitor, I sighed. <sighs> I knew they'd come. When I opened the door, there stood my pale-faced sister and my ex-husband. I need your help. I need money. Please, lend me money. They pleaded desperately. My husband wore a puzzled expression, but my mother and I had a different reaction. During the day, while waiting for my sister's call, my mother received a message from someone. It was from a friend of my late father's who currently lives in my former parents' house, which is now rented out to their family. When they returned home, they had found the garden flower beds trampled and the window glass cracked. The security camera captured the image of a furious woman stomping on the flower beds and hurling stones at the glass. Of course, it is my sister Carly who is furious on the phone with me. When my mother shared my sister's contact information with our friend, he learned that my sister had been the one who had caused his dear friend, my father, years of suffering, and this enraged him. Among the damaged plants, there were reportedly precious flowers that were difficult to follow. It seems he also demanded compensation for the damages. I anticipated their reappearance due to their evident financial difficulties and struggles with housing, but I never imagined they would show up on that particular day. I was impressed by their energy. I can give you the money if you want, but there is a condition. Afterwards, as I watched the two of them dejectedly walking away, I couldn't help but laugh and say, Serves you right. In my hand, I held the freshly signed agreement. As a condition for taking on this matter on their behalf, I made them sign a pledge to never approach us again. Still, Carly is my blood-related sister. Cutting ties with her completely is difficult. There might come a time when she will try to approach us again using this privilege. At that time, I'm prepared to fight, whether it be in court or anywhere else using the secretly recorded audio from 13 years ago in this incident. That's how determined I am not to forgive my sister and her husband in the future. I later heard from a friend that my ex-husband quit his job at a major company right after divorcing me and started working as a staff member at the fortune-telling establishment managed by my former mother-in-law. He and my sister seemed to live a luxurious life with a high salary because they were relatives. However, a few months ago, my former mother-in-law suddenly passed away due to illness. My ex-husband took over as the successor, but he had no talent for fortune-telling. The fortune-telling establishment quickly became deserted. In a panic, my sister and her husband. This is a bracelet made with heartfelt intentions by our late mother. It seems they started a business telling lies to the people who had faith in the late mother-in-law. However, their lies were exposed through internal whistleblowing and now a victim's association has been established. The fortune-telling establishment is being inundated with victims every day as it served as their workplace and residence. With nowhere else to go, my sisters sought refuge in our home. It's absolutely audacious and infuriating. However, considering the police's recent actions, it's only a matter of time before the two of them face legal consequences. After that, we moved again. It was due to my husband Richard's job transfer. Am I really allowed to come along? With an apologetic look, my mother asked. What are you saying? You are a cherished member of our family. Even if you resist, I'll carry you forcefully and take you with us. My husband Richard joked and laughed. Thank you. She shed tears of gratitude. Grandma is crying again. Here, take this tissue. While Ryan, my son, chuckled and expressed concern over my mother's easily moved nature, I watched the scene of my family with a sense of gratitude for the happiness I currently had. My husband's family usually mocks me for my weight, but once I told them who I really was, they live to regret it. 
I wish you brought someone as pretty as me, like an actress or a reporter. It's embarrassing that it's a plain piggy like you. I was astonished when my mother-in-law said that to me with a grin when I came to greet her at my wedding. How could she make fun of someone she had almost never met before? I envy you. You are obese and weigh 180 pounds. I wish you could share the weight with me. My in-law skulked at my body shape. My patience was being squeezed to the brink of breaking under the condescending stairs. I'm Courtney, 31 years old. My parents run a farm in the countryside, and they always told me to eat a lot, and I have always taken that seriously. And I found myself becoming the chubby girl that everyone recognizes. I once tried dieting, but I could not restrict my diet. I couldn't stand to see food that farmers like my parents would have carefully produced thrown away at the hands of girls who are much thinner than I was. I can't change the way I live, but I can't like myself as I am. In order to come to terms with my inadequate self, I took a leap of faith and decided to get the job I have now. Three years later, when I was gaining support from other women, who were also struggling with the same issues, I began to accept myself. Soon after, I met Scott through work, and we became friends, and soon started dating. However, after we had been lovers for a while, I had to go abroad for work. My boyfriend Scott and I were in a long-distance relationship for about five years. During that time, we were on the verge of breaking up several times. But each time we talked it out, and we overcame the difficulties by discussing and reconciling our feelings. Soon after I returned to the U.S. after finishing work, he proposed to me. Of course I said yes. I was happy, and my work and private life were smooth sailing. First, we went to my parents' house to report our marriage, and received generous hospitality from them. Two weeks later, we went to his parents' house to say hello. He seems very uncomfortable even though it was his parents' house. I knew from what I had heard that their relationship was not good, and they were almost insulated. His family is a family of people in the entertaining industry. He also told me that he is an outcast there. On the way to his parents' house, he was dressed in a suit and told me about his family which he had never actively talked about before. His father, Robert, is a comedian who used to be a dominant figure in his generation. His mother, Chloe, used to be a model and was charismatic among middle and high school girls. His sister, Ellen, is a new singer. My parents are from the past, but they think they are still at the forefront. And I'm treated like a failure because I didn't become an entertainer. Sure. You're not a celebrity, but as a behind-the-scenes person, you're amazing. You're not a failure. He laughed at my unintentional words. You're more amazing than me. I can't say it openly yet, though. Here we are. I was stunned to see my in-law's house that he brought me to. The white western-style house surrounded by a fence with roses in bloom in places. It was like entering a fairy tale world. It stood out from the rest of the neighborhood. This is your parents' house? I heard that my father built it according to my mother's taste. He told me this without hesitation and walked on with an unflattering look on his face. Hello, welcome. The man who opened the front door was my father-in-law with a cheerful look on his face. He was the comedian I used to see on TV. He was Sunrise Robert, whose orange full body suit was a feature of the show back then. But I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw him. He was wearing a jacket covered in sequins and a big booty that looked as big as his face. But the bottom half of his body was not covered in sequins, but in a threadbare jersey and bare feet. Dad, I told you I'd be bringing my fiancé today, didn't I? I was startled by his sharp voice. Oh, sorry. I have to greet her. Nice to meet you. I'm the woman dating your son. 
I'm Sunrise Robert, the famous Rise and Sink guy. Of course you know who I am, don't you, young lady? What? My father-in-law interrupted my greeting with a line that I had heard on TV many times before. He winked at me very poorly. That word, that attitude, his earlier words, he didn't seem to care at all. Plus, he called me young lady. I was taken aback by the things he said and did that I didn't think he would say or do to his son's fiance. You have to be back for a while, and you still look as bitter as ever. Well, I don't want to stand around and talk, so come on in. Oh, you can't take pictures. It's a private space. My father-in-law said and went into the back of the room, his footsteps making a pitter-patter sound. Welcome to our lovely home. When I opened the door to the living room, I couldn't help but smile at the two women who were there. There they were, my mother-in-law dressed violently, and my sister-in-law dressed like a magical girl. Both of them are suddenly slender and beautiful, as they are both celebrities. My mother-in-law looked at least 10 years younger than she actually was. The sister-in-law had pigtails and was wearing a one-piece dress with a big gem at the neckline. I couldn't believe that she was in her late 20s. We didn't know what kind of girl you were going to bring, so we went all out. I look good, don't I? I smile affectionately at my mother-in-law's words. Combined with my father-in-law's attire, I feel as if I've been mixed in with the Halloween party. Then, I feel the judging glances, as if I wasn't worthy of being there. I gently drop my gaze and reassess my outfit. The dress I had bought for the occasion was brand new and without a single wrinkle. Even my accessories were simple and elegant. My hair and makeup were done by my favorite hair salon. I straightened my back and smiled at her. My name is Courtney, and I'm dating Scott. Nice to meet you. As soon as I had finished the basic greetings, my sister-in-law took one look at the paperback I had handed her. Is that candy? I knew that with a body type like that, your souvenirs must be food. What did you say I have that kind of body type? No, you and I need to talk, don't we? Please sit down. My mother-in-law said with an elegant laugh, as if nothing had happened. I sat down in the chair and make a creaking noise. I heard everyone except me and Scott let out a small gasp. My mother-in-law widened her eyes and asked, Oh my goodness! How many pounds are you? Even my husband wouldn't creak. You're not 160 pounds, are you? Can you tell me? Hey, that's rude. What? It doesn't matter what I ask. Besides, if I need to, I will have to get a sturdier chair. You know what? Scott, it's fine. It would be bad if I broke the chair. I weigh 180 pounds. 180 pounds? Wow, that's like twice my size. How can you get so big? Scott gave me one loud cough, and the family finally quieted down. He introduced me again and we restarted our greetings. My name is Courtney. It's nice to meet you. My father-in-law laughed at me. You guys are grown-ups. You don't need my permission to get married, do you? I was about to burst out laughing in relief, regardless of my choice of words, when my father-in-law continued. I'm sure you understand this. If you're going to marry that chubby plain girl, don't invite us to the wedding. What? Yeah, don't you feel that it's rude to me who gave birth to someone as good looking as you to marry someone like her? You started working at a TV station because you were longing for the glamorous world, weren't you? If you were going to work at a TV station, you might as well marry an announcer or an actress. If she were as beautiful as me, I would have welcomed her. It's embarrassing to be related to a country pig like her. Well, I... If you really want to get married, then we will have nothing to do with it. My in-laws not in agreement. We were appalled by my in-laws who rejected us as. 
Come on, you don't know anything. Have you no shame? She's. He gulped down his words as I pulled his arm to calm him down. She's actually the number one female professional wrestler or something. My mother-in-law and sister-in-law laughed out loud at my father-in-law's joking tone. Oh really? But then again, her plump breasts and lower body are a bit of distraction, aren't they? My sister-in-law says this as she stares at me. My mother-in-law nodded in agreement and continued. I envy you. You're obese and weigh 180 pounds, and I want you to share your weight with me. Then you could give my slender figure a little more body. My mother-in-law pinched the flesh of my cheek. The fake nails dug in, and when I frowned, she gave me a look of obvious disapproval. What? I was only joking. You are such a rude girl to stare at me like that. Something snapped inside me. I understood how you all feel now. But let me ask you this. Would you rather have me or your family? I asked Scott in a quiet voice as I looked over at my in-laws who were making fun of me and getting loud and excited. You, Courtney. He called my name in a whisper. I was ready for that one word. I slipped my hand gently into the bag that was in my hand and quietly asked the family, You told me to do what I wanted with my marriage, right? My father-in-law looked taken aback by the tone of my voice and laughed. As far as I can tell, you said that you don't consider us family or relatives. Can I take that as a declaration of insulation? So what? My mother-in-law beat down hysterically. I continued in a quiet voice. Understood. Then that's how we will take it from here on out. Thank you very much for today. We will leave you now. I stood up, bowed my head and left. We left the premises and got into the car. After taking a deep breath, I took his hand and bowed. I'm sorry for saying all that earlier. I will ask you again. Would you rather... I want to marry you. I want you to be my family. I smiled at his words and we held each other's hand and started the car. Although he chose me over his family, I'm not that kind of person who can be satisfied with that and let his family's treatment of me slide. You know what? I told him what I was thinking. He seems hesitant for a moment, but then immediately said I could do whatever I wanted. I was going to confront that insane, self-centered family with reality. Six months later, a message arrived on my husband's phone with a very polite text asking him to come to their house. The sender of the message was his family, whom he hadn't heard from. We could have ignored the message, but similar messages continued to arrive day after day. I should tell them about my plans for the future. We couldn't just leave it at that. We decided to head to my parents-in-law's house for the first time in six months. Finally, you are here! Why didn't you come right away? Oh, it's you! Long time no see. After opening the front door and yelling, my mother-in-law took one look at me. You must have thick nerves to really get married. You told me to do as I please. So not long after that, we got married. We contacted each other's parents about our marriage, but only my parents responded properly. So we decided to have a photo wedding after explaining the situation to my parents and relatives. Later, we held a casual wedding party, inviting only those who we both wanted to invite. My mother-in-law clearly looked irritated at my words. She we did tell you about it. You were the one who ignored it. My husband retorted sharply and my mother-in-law became silent. Please come in for now. I thought she was going to hysterically turn me away. In the living room, my sister-in-law and father-in-law were arguing about which of them was going to show the program. You are still only looking out for yourselves, aren't you? My husband muttered to himself, but it didn't seem to have reached the ears of the family. My mother-in-law called my father-in-law and sister-in-law 
and sat them down in chairs side by side. I've called you here for something important. I just want to ask you to give us a little bit of money. What are you talking about? I only need a little bit. A thousand dollars. No, eight hundred dollars. If you work for a company, you get paid every month, right? You need to help your family. I can't afford it. I have plans. Plans? We were going to Paris soon. It's for my job. Your work? Yes. Even if you're a little fat, it's easy to travel first class. At my words, the family members quiet down to a scene for a moment. Then, they started to laugh out loud. A country girl going overseas for work. You're going to lie like that because you don't want to help us out? I'm not lying. Besides, I'm not a farmer. She's a plus size model, an actress who works mainly overseas. My mother in law and father in law opened their mouths. My sister in law rushed to her phone and started searching for information. Mom, look at this! Comparing me to the screen, my in laws twisted their lips. As if they couldn't believe what they were seeing. But you're a farmer's daughter. That's true. But I didn't take over the family business. Six months ago, I still couldn't say it out loud. But now that it's open to the public, I guess it's okay. I took off the movie poster and took it out of my bag. No way! The three of them stared intensely at the poster. There I was. Posing beside the main character, albeit with different makeup and hair. In a series of films by a Hollywood film director that everyone had heard of, I was a newcomer, but I had been chosen to be a key player in this film. Who cares if you're in a movie? My mom and dad have been in movies too. I've done a voiceover in an animated film or two. Yeah, that's right. Just because you've been in a movie directed by a famous director doesn't make you better than us. I smiled at my mother in law and sister in law, who were trying to get at me. You're right. I'm still a rookie, and I'm not well known. I was told I wouldn't be accepted unless I was good enough, so I didn't even get into my grandfather's production company. And I went on audition after audition, and that's how I got where I am today. Right? My in laws smirked as if they won. Then all of a sudden, my father in law jumps up in a panic. Wait a minute! Your grandfather's production? He bit the bait. I suppressed the urge of smirk and replied with an annoying look on my face. Didn't I tell you? My parents are farmers, but my grandfather on my mother's side is the president of a Polaris production. What? My parents in law were speechless at my words. Yes, my grandfather is a powerful man in the entertainment industry, who is also known as the dawn of the entertainment industry. He is known to many people in the industry, both young and experienced, and his words hold a lot of value. Polaris Production is also home to famous and popular actors and comedians with more than 10 shows under their belt. Even if you are not familiar with the industry, you may not be unaware of Polaris Productions. You can't be serious! The reason I haven't been getting any work lately is. What did you say about me? I didn't have time to get to know you all. All I told him was that I want to marry someone, and what kind of reaction I got from his family. My smile made the whole family turn pale. Of course it would. Even though they didn't know it, they judged and made fun of the granddaughter of a prominent figure in the entertainment industry based on appearance alone. That's almost the same as picking a fight with him. At the very least, they should have at least acknowledged their surroundings and look at the reality instead of just talking about themselves on a regular basis. If they had listened to me properly, none of this would have happened. Then my father in law looked at us. Raised his eyebrows and made a cap powing sound. Hey, Courtney, say a few words to your grandfather for me, please. We are not getting any work, and if we don't do something about it, 
We are going to get shut out of the entertainment business. We are family, aren't we? Yes, it's your fault we are in this mess. It's a family crisis, so you should be able to give us some money or some work. If you have a face abroad and in the entertainment business, I know you are new and your figure is not the best, but I will accept you as my big sister. The three of them were looking at me with flirtatious glances, and it was hard to say anything. My husband sighed and then spoke up. We are going to Paris soon. We are moving there permanently. We just came here today to tell you that. Really? Well, if you're moving, that means you have money, right? Then... I mean, I married the girl you guys were insulting, didn't I? I know. That's no reason not to help us. It is. You said at that time that if he married me, you would cut him off. I could see my in-laws gulp at my words. That, that was just a casual remark. I don't know how you felt about it, but I have the audio from that time. I even back it up. You can't just do that. I will sue you for invasion of privacy. If you want to sue me, go ahead. But at that time, in addition to the audio, I will also take pictures of the wounds you gave me when you pinched me with your fingernails. I will also provide you with a record of all the things that you did to me at the time. My husband looked at his mother, who was clinging to him, and said quietly, I'm not a member of this family anymore either. I'm taking her last name. You have always said that I was a failure and a disgrace to our family. Now I no longer belong to this family, in name or in reality. My mother-in-law slumped on the spot at my husband's self-mocking smile. Neither my father-in-law nor sister-in-law made a sound. We signaled with our eyes and stood up. Well, we will take our leave now. We then declared that we would erase all contact with my in-laws. Within a few months, we had started our life together in Paris. I later heard that my grandfather was not involved in any way in the family's job loss at that time. It seems that all three of them were well known in the industry for their bad attitude towards staff and junior staff. They were looked at with a white eye by those around them. The only job they had left was an appearance on a local TV program that aired a five-minute segment on weekdays about a family living in the countryside. The family that had mocked me so much as a country bumpkin was now the last remaining bastion of the entertainment industry. They are forced to live an almost self-sufficient life in the countryside deep in the mountains, where they cannot even get a decent signal on their cell phones. I, on the other hand, was blessed with modeling jobs. After that, I got a chance to appear in a movie as a main character. My husband is continuing his work while studying stage design. And now I have a new baby in my belly. I'm happy to knit little socks while thinking about what name I should give her. My husband throws out all of my belongs in the dumpster. I then find something in the dumpster that would ruin my husband's life. Don't get carried away with the money you're getting. There is no place for you to go back to. My husband shouted over the phone. Shortly after that, I received a message in a text. It was a picture of my belongings being dumped in a dumpster. How could they do this with impunity? Disgusted, I immediately went to retrieve my luggage. Huh, this is... I began to collect my stuff. And there was one thing there that I was confused about. My name is Mia, and I'm a 42-year-old housewife. My husband Elijah and I have been married for over 15 years. We were originally co-workers in the same office. We started working together and talking over drinks, and we grew closer. After about a year of dating, he proposed to me. I liked him, and he was three years older than me and reliable. I thought, if I get married to this person, I will be able to live happily. With this in mind, I accepted his proposal. And so, we got married. He told me the following before we got married. 
I want you to quit your job and become a housewife. I was only 26 years old at the time and could still work hard, but I was not obsessed with my job, so I quickly agreed. Okay, I will quit and support our family. Then, I left the company on marriage and became a full-time housewife. From then on, I worked hard at housework and put my energy into cleaning and cooking. I cooked hard every day and made meals to satisfy my husband for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Wow, I didn't expect you to work so hard on the housework. The house is squeaky clean and the food is delicious. Thank you so much. I was very happy to hear my husband express his gratitude like that. My husband worked hard at his job and rose steadily in his career because he had asked me to be a housewife. We were able to live on my husband's salary alone without any problems. We enjoyed our time as a couple, going for drives and trips on our days off. I think we were very happy in our newlywed life like that. However, about three years after we got married, problems began to occur in our marriage. It all started with my mother-in-law, Isabella. Mia, when are you going to have a baby? You have been married for three years. You will be 30 soon, and it will be harder for you to have children. You need to have a sense of urgency. My mother-in-law yelled at me and put pressure on me like that. Of course, my husband and I are trying hard to have children, but it's not that simple. I told her so, but she didn't listen to me at all. You can't have a baby right away because you are taking your time like that. You should do fertility treatment or something like that. I won't allow you to not have a baby. My mother-in-law kept putting pressure on me like that. If she continued to pressure me like that, I would never be able to have children. However, my mother-in-law said more and more terrible words to me without thinking about my feelings. She was so abusive to me that I was in a lot of pain. So I asked my husband for advice. Hey, your mother's attitude toward me is terrible. She said a lot of things about my inability to have children. When I asked him about it, he replied. Well, it's true that you can't have children, isn't it? It's no wonder my mom says so. It's your fault for not having children. Wait. You're saying it's my fault? It's true, isn't it? It's not my fault, of course. How can you be so sure? Because I'm the one who said so. Try harder, so you don't disappoint my mother anymore. But... I was very shocked to hear my husband talk to me like that. At one point, I even considered divorce, but I had already been out of work for several years so I couldn't divorce him easily. Then, I got pregnant. At that time, my husband and mother-in-law praised me. You did it! About time! I wish you could have had her sooner! And I successfully gave birth to a child. It was a girl, and we named her Emma. I was very happy about the birth of my beautiful baby girl. But my mother-in-law said, why didn't you have a boy? She complained to my mother-in-law. Having a child means having a boy who will be her heir. Therefore, my mother-in-law did not try to love my daughter at all. My husband, unlike my mother-in-law, did not seem to be obsessed with the idea of an heir, and he loved my daughter. So I never divorced him, and we have been living together until now as husband and wife and as parents of our daughter. However, since we were basically connected only by the fact that we care for our daughter, we had terrible fights when we clashed. And at those times, my mother-in-law would always join my husband in blaming me. At the time, my daughter was small and I had no one on my side. Incidentally, my father-in-law was indifferent, or rather, he never tried to get involved with us in the first place. So, it didn't matter how much my mother-in-law picked on me, and even if she had been nice to me, 
he probably wouldn't have tried to get involved. He is the type of person who has no complaints as long as his daily meals are prepared. If my daughter speaks to him, he gives her a nod. But if she doesn't get involved, he doesn't try to get involved himself. It was harmless in both good and bad ways. That is why he was not someone I could rely on. So, while occasionally quarreling and confronting my husband and mother-in-law, I managed to do my best as a housewife to raise my daughter well. Now that my daughter is in her second year of junior high school, it is time to think about her future career. She has recently become interested in dance and wants to take dance lessons at the dance school. She became interested in dance when she saw her classmate dancing in a class at school. She was not involved in any club activities, so it was possible for her to go and learn after school. I asked my husband for advice. Emma wants to take dance lessons. I checked and there seems to be a good dance school in town. So can we enroll her? Since I must stay at home mom, this kind of thing requires confirmation from my husband. I thought it was just a confirmation and that my husband would normally agree to it. But to my surprise, he started to object. Of course, you can't do that. What? Why not? This is the first time she has expressed her desire to do something on her own. It's only $50 a month for lessons. No, it's a waste of money. What? Why can't you support your daughter to try something? She won't become a dancer if she takes lessons now. It's a waste of money. You won't know until you try. Besides, I don't think it's only important to become a professional dancer. You can develop the ability to see people around you and cooperate with them through that kind of experience. Shut up! No means no! If you insist so much, you work and pay for it. I won't pay for it out of my paycheck. My husband said that to me with wide eyes. I was surprised and disgusted with my husband because I didn't expect him to get angry like that. He's worthless when he doesn't care about his daughter. That's what I thought. I immediately looked for a job after my husband said those things to me. Luckily, there was a job opening at a nearby supermarket, so I applied for it and was successfully hired. I started working part-time during the daytime on weekdays. Thanks to that, I was able to pay for my daughter's dance lesson. She started attending the class, and I was impressed by how hard she practiced every time. I thought, if she can do it with such passion, it was the right decision to let her learn. However, my daughter was not only doing her best because she loved dancing, but she also had another reason for doing so. She had apparently been listening in on our conversation and knew that the reason I was working was for her dance class. So she said that she was trying her best in her lessons so that she would not waste the money I earned from working. I was moved to realize that my daughter was growing up so well. Children mature before you know it. But on the other hand, my husband started to say childish things more and more, whether it is a degeneration or his nature. Don't be so proud that you are only earning money part time to pay for Emma's lessons. You and Emma eat with the money I earn. Don't forget to respect me. That's how my husband is. In the past, he never used to be such a domineering husband. But lately, he has become increasingly hostile toward me because I do things that he doesn't approve of. I also feel that he cares less about our daughter than before. I wonder what kind of change of heart has occurred. To be honest, it bothers me when he gets involved with me in such a troublesome way. And when my husband attacks me, my mother-in-law also joins in and attacks me, which is troublesome. Yes, that's right! You guys are able to make a living because of Elijah. Without him, you would be homeless. If you continue with that cocky attitude, I will kick you out. My mother-in-law, who does not live with us, yells at me and my daughter like that. 
My daughter has grown to dislike her grandmother, who doesn't take care of her. And she has also grown to dislike her father, because of his recent terrible attitude. I used to always talk back to my husband and my mother-in-law for my daughter's sake. But I think my husband's recent attitude is really terrible. He has never said such terrible things or been so arrogant before. I wonder why he has changed so much. Then one day, an incident happened. It was when my daughter was able to advance in a dance competition, and she passed the preliminary round and competed in the finals. The finals were in a rural area and started early in the morning. So my daughter and I planned to go there the day before and stay at a hotel. But when I told my husband about it, he again objected. What about the housework while you're gone? What about my food? Well, you're an adult, so you will have to prepare it appropriately. My husband's eyes widened in anger when I said this. Don't be silly! I won't allow you to go to the convention if you're going to make me do that. He got angry again as usual. So I didn't deal with him and took my daughter and left the house. Then, about a month after the convention, I received a phone call from my husband. Are you prepared to skip housework like that? What do you mean by prepared? I'm working for Emma as a mother. Why don't you understand that? Why don't you have the open-mindedness to think about someone other than yourself? Don't get carried away with all the money you're getting. You have no place to go back to. My husband shouted into the phone. Shortly after that, a picture was texted to my phone. What? What's this? It was a picture of my belongings being dumped in a dumpster. How could they do this with impunity? Dismayed, I immediately headed home to retrieve my belongings. But no matter how fast I drove, it would take several hours. So it was late at night when I arrived at the dumpster. There I found a large amount of my clothes, accessories, bags, and other things that had been thrown away. My daughter was absolutely mortified, as if she had never thought her father would do such a thing. At first, I collected mainly the things that I treasured. I would just get rid of the things I never wore. You are so strong, mom! Surprised by my daughter, I sorted my belongings one after another into the garbage bags I had bought at the supermarket. Huh? What's this? As I was collecting my belongings, I noticed something strange. Wow, that's a beautiful necklace. My daughter looked at the necklace I had picked up and said that. It's a luxury brown and quite expensive. What? Mom, you had such an amazing thing. No, no, it's not mine. What do you mean? I don't know either. Surely the design looks a bit young for something that belonged to you. You mean there was something in the house that wasn't yours or grandma's? My daughter's question made me gasp. Could it be that my husband is having an affair? And this jewelry might belong to the adulterer? Somehow, I knew that I shouldn't take it home, and it wouldn't be good to leave it as it was. I shoved it into the deepest part of the garbage bag for discarding it and throw the bag away in the back of the dumpster. If my husband was having an affair, and that was his affair partner's, he would surely come looking for it. He would have a very hard time finding it if it was in a hard-to-find situation like that. I finished collecting all my belongings and went home with my daughter. Then, my husband spoke to me looking a little flustered. Did you go to the dumpster? I did. Then you're collecting what I throw away, aren't you? What are you talking about when you throw them out yourself? I'm asking if you collected it. My husband became emotional and raised his voice. My daughter gave him a stern look and said, You're the worst, Dad. How can you throw away Mom's things without permission? Who the hell do you think you are to act like that? Shut up. This isn't a conversation for children. Hey, you can't yell at Emma. She's being cocky. You're just being crazy. 
You threw it away yourself, and now you are demanding me to answer your question. Are you emotionally unstable? Shut up! Just answer the question I'm asking you. I did. It's in the car. Let me see it. With that, my husband opened the trunk of the car and began to search through the mess. My daughter and I were convinced that he was looking for that jewelry. We knew he was looking for that necklace. What are you looking for? What? I think something important might have gotten mixed up in there. Something important, huh? And what is that? It's none of your business. Saying that, he started rummaging around in the car. Did you really retrieve everything? I bought some garbage bags and threw away almost half of the stuff. I'm glad I got to declutter. My husband slumped down on the spot. What the hell were you thinking? Saying this, my husband glared at me and got angry. Who does he really think he is? What? You're the one who threw it all away. And if you leave something you didn't want thrown away, why should you be angry at me for it? Shut up! Don't talk back to me! My husband was so angry with me. Then my daughter said, Mom, I got what looks like proof. My daughter approached us grinning. Dad's phone. I opened it easily because his password was his own birthday. Hey, what are you doing with that? It's your fault for leaving it there. This confirms that you were communicating with a woman and that she left her jewelry at home. And you got a text to bring it back for your next date. This means you are having an affair, right? Give it back! My husband said and took the phone from my daughter. Elijah, you can't get away with this anymore. What the hell are you talking about? Emma must have seen something wrong. My husband showed me his text. Apparently, in a split second, he had erased the message exchanged with the adulterer. He's really cunning, isn't he? Well, that is to say, he's admitting his infidelity. But in the contest of wits, my daughter was one step ahead of him. Oh, I thought you would erase it, so I sent screenshots of the text to my phone. I resent it to you, mom. Saying that, my daughter sent me the screenshot of the text between my husband and the daughter. In addition to the necklace mentioned earlier, there were also those in which they whispered words of love to each other, and those in which they promised dates and trips, all of which were evidence that they were having an affair for sure. Thank you, Emma. This proves that this man is having an affair. Let's get a divorce. My daughter smiled and gave me a peace sign. She really is a reliable daughter. My husband seems to realize that he could no longer get away with it and got down on his knee to me. I'm sorry. I was wrong. So please don't give me a divorce. Alimony and child support are a lot to pay. What are you talking about? Divorce is a matter of cause. I held out the divorce papers I had prepared just in case. Sign this, please. If you don't, I will take you to court. The word court must have scared him. My husband is very public-spirited, so he was afraid of a court case that would cause a fuss among people at work. Then, I received the divorce papers that my husband had signed. Then, my daughter and I packed up our necessary belongings for the time being, loaded them into the car, and left the house. Soon after, I rented an apartment and moved out. Then I consulted a lawyer and decided to file a claim for alimony against my ex-husband and the adulterous partner. Incidentally, I heard that the necklace of the fair partner that my ex-husband accidentally threw away together was extremely expensive. The adulterous partner was furious and demanded alimony. My husband was then dumped by her. What was even more surprising was that it was apparently my mother-in-law who introduced my ex-husband to the adulterer. She hoped that if she got him to remarry a young woman, this time he would give birth to a boy. However, as a result, my ex-husband was required to pay for the necklace and was saddled with a large amount of debt 
including alimony and child support for the affair. My ex-husband seems to be yelling at my ex-mother-in-law that it's all her fault and they have cut ties with each other. Not only was my former mother-in-law disowned by her own son, but also completely avoided by her neighbors because they knew that she had done something to mediate the affair. My ex-mother-in-law became mentally ill and stopped doing housework, but my ex-father-in-law yelled at my ex-mother-in-law and pushed her father, saying that he would never forgive her for not cooking. However, my ex-mother-in-law could not cook properly and could only cook bad tasting food, and my ex-father-in-law became ill. My ex-husband sends me long emails with this story and asked me to get back together with him, but I don't reply to his emails and mark them as spam. I am spending happy days with my daughter and my parents while earning money by working full-time at the supermarket job. I will continue to work hard while watching my daughter grow up. My husband forced me to quit my job and then experienced a life of misery after realizing how little money he really had. If you can't make ends meet with a take-home pay of $2,500, get out! Saying this, my husband forced me to leave. When I woke up the next day, I found a large number of incoming calls from my husband. Hey, where's the key to the safe? That's a type that can only be opened with a pin code. Then, my husband went through hell. My name is Amelia, and I'm a 32-year-old office worker. My husband Lucas and I have been married for almost three years. We were originally classmates in college and started dating when we met again at a class reunion. At the time, I was heartbroken after being dumped by my longtime boyfriend. I reconnected with Lucas for the first time in a long time and felt comfortable with him, which brought back the nostalgic feeling I had when I was a student. We started going out for drinks after work and started dating. Since we had been friends since school, we didn't have to worry about each other, and I was able to talk about many things and be myself. We continued to date well, and after about a year of dating, we decided to get married. I was almost 30 years old, and I wanted to get married while I was still in my 20s. Lucas was working for a company that paid him a low salary, but he seemed to work hard and I was working as a company employee myself, so I knew life would be fine. We then officially got married. In the beginning, we had a lot of fun because we were newlyweds. Just being together every day made me happy. But as we continued our married life, there was something that bothered me a little. My husband did not do any housework at all. I was the one who cooked, cleaned, and did the laundry. Hey, why don't you do a little bit of the housework too? It's hard for me because I'm the one who has to do all the chores. I complained to my husband, but he would not listen to me at all. I've never done housework before. I see. My husband had lived at home since he was born and had never cooked or washed a day's laundry. I had no idea that he had never done that much housework. Then you can learn little by little, I'll teach you. I suggested to my husband, but he refused. No, I always work late. There's no way I'm going to do the housework after that. My husband suddenly works overtime every day, but I didn't really understand why I was the only one who had to shoulder this additional burden. Besides, I made more money than my husband who worked a lot of overtime and came home late. So I was not satisfied with the situation where I was the only one who had to do the housework. However, my husband stubbornly refused to do the housework. I'm the head of the family and I work hard. As a wife, I need you to support the family. If that's the case, I want you to earn more money. But I couldn't say such a thing and I had no choice but to do the housework by myself. I was dissatisfied with many things, 
but I still liked my husband, so I did my best at housework and continued to work hard. But then, my husband made an unexpected comment. It was one day at dinner. Amelia, when are you going to stop working? What? What do you mean? When you become a wife, you quit your job and focus on the family, right? Wait a minute. I'm not going to quit my job. Huh? Don't be ridiculous. I've been told at work that it's impossible for a wife not to be a housewife. Don't embarrass me anymore. So quit your job right now. I was surprised to hear my husband suddenly say such a thing. I don't know if it was a co worker or a boss who said that to him. But ain't the people at his company crazy too? It's normal for both people to work nowadays. And if anything, my salary is higher than my husband. If I quit my job, we would have a hard time making ends meet. It's not realistic for me to quit my job. How are we going to make a living? Are you going to lower the rent on the house we are living in? No, I'm not moving out of here. Why should we have to lower our quality of life than we do now? That being said, your take home pay is $2,500, so you're going to have to save money to make ends meet. The rent for this room right now is $2,000. That leaves you with only $500 left. It's a job of a stay at home wife to make ends meet. I was absolutely mortified when my husband started talking like this. I wondered if he had any concept of utilities, water, electricity bills, and so on. $500 a month is just barely enough for food. There is no way we can make a decent living. I pleaded desperately, but my husband would not listen to me at all. I've never had any problems before I got married, so you just have to make it work. I was taken aback by my husband's unreasonable attitude. My husband had been living at home with his parents, so it would have cost him very little money to begin with. I would not like him to impose his sense of that time on me. However, my husband insisted that I become a full time housewife, and I had no choice but to comply with his request. With a downcast look on my face, I asked my boss for advice. Amelia, are you sure you want to quit? My husband really wants me to be a full time housewife. Oh no. Are you sure there is nothing you can do about it? He won't listen to me at all, no matter what I say. I see. My boss was very confused. Then, after thinking about it for a while, he made this suggestion Why don't you treat it as a leave of absence for now? And then try to work from home. What? Work from home? Yes, I'm sure your husband would agree with that. From the outside, you will look like a housewife. I see. I thought it was a very good idea. If I was allowed to work from home, I could concentrate on housework. And on top of that, I would have a solid income so that I could lead a good life. I immediately decided to take a leave of absence under those conditions. And I didn't tell my husband about this and said that I had resigned from my job. When I told him I had quit my job, my husband looked satisfied. Now we can both finally do our part. From now on, don't skimp on any of the housework. My husband laughed. I felt that he really didn't understand my situation. Or that he was too naive. Well, as long as I work hard behind the scenes, we'll be okay for now. I was given a month leave of absence for now, and then I was to work from home. After actually living on leave for a month, I realized that this was a really bad idea. My husband's salary was too small to make a decent living. First of all, we had to pay $2,000 in rent. And then another hundred or so for water, electricity, gas, and utilities. At that point, we were left with only about $400. On top of that, 
The Wi-Fi at the house and the communication fee for the smartphone would also take away about $100. So I would only have about $300 left to spend on food. That is a very low level of food cost for a single person. But this was our budget for food for two people. It would be impossible. However, I wanted my husband to understand how difficult this situation was. So I dared to try living on his salary alone for a month. If he lived like that, he would understand how small his salary was and how impossible it would be for the two of us to live together. My husband was getting more and more green-faced day by day. That was understandable, because I had cut our food expenses to the limit, so the food on the table was very little and frugal. Is it just bread again today? Yes, that's right. Yesterday, it was noodles, and today it's bread. Are you even trying to cook? What are you talking about? We are eating like this because we have to cut back on our food expenses. What? That's impossible. Before we got married, I could eat a lot more nutritious food. That's because you are living at home, right? It was your father who was paying for your food, wasn't it? No, it wasn't. I was putting money in the house. I was putting $500 in the house every month, which means I was paying for the food. Even if he had to put $500 in the house, he would not have had to pay anything else, so he would have $2,000 in free money to spend. We only have $300 to spend on food after all other expenses. Why can't he do that kind of a calculation or thinking? I didn't think that my husband was such an uncommunicative and uncommon person. Is he out of his mind, working for a bad company? that only makes this much money even though he works overtime every day. I even had such suspicions. Can you get a little bit more of a sense of how your money is moving, or how much you are making and what you are spending it on? I showed him the bills for utilities, gas, and rent. If I went this far, he would understand how difficult it is to live on my husband's salary alone. But my husband would not even look at them. Cut the crap! I've had a normal, trouble-free life. It's your fault that my meals are frugal and that we can't make ends meet. Now that you're a housewife, you should do better. My husband yelled at me and went back to his room. With a sigh, I put the dishes he had finished eating in the sink and washed them, leaving them on the dining table. I didn't think he was like this before we got married. I guess you can't really understand a person's nature until you live with them. I immediately started working from home. I decided to live on my savings until my next payday. Even so, I decided to live on my husband's take-home pay of $2,500 plus a little extra so that we could save as much as possible. Basically. My husband's salary will cover our living expenses, and I will use my savings to pay for the food expenses. Therefore, the food we usually put on the table become more nutritious, and the number of dishes increase. My husband seems satisfied with the improved diet. See? You can do it if you try. Why didn't you take it seriously from the beginning? It's obvious you've been slacking off. I was extremely angry at being told such a thing, but I persevered. I had to hold out until I got my next paycheck. I spent the rest of my busy days juggling housework during the day and my work from home job. Finally, a month passed and my salary and my husband's salary came in. I kept my bank documents at my parents' house because I was afraid of what my husband might do to me after I found out he was insane. As long as I had my debit card, I could withdraw money, and I could check the balance in my account with my phone. So I seldom needed my bank documents, and I did one more thing just in case. I bought a small safe to keep my husband's salary in. It's a very inexpensive safe but it's a convenient safe that can be locked by entering a 10-digit PIN code. After my husband's paycheck came in, I decided to keep the money in this safe, 
and transfer the rent and other expenses when it was time to pay. Otherwise, my husband would suddenly spend the money. To my surprise, my bad premonition came true. It happened one day. Hey, I ordered something, and it will be delivered tomorrow, so you need to pay for it. What? What's getting delivered? A set of golf clubs. What? What do you mean? My boss and I were talking about playing golf, so I ordered a set online. Wait a minute. How much did it cost? $2,000 for the whole thing. We can't afford that. Why not? You're not doing a very good job of keeping track of the money, are you? Your salary is $2,500 a month. After paying $2,000 for rent, you have only $500 left. With that $500 left over, we still need to pay for various other bills. And yet, $2,000 out of pocket is a negative amount. This is simple math. Why don't you understand? My husband's face turned red, and he got angry when I got emotional and said so. Shut up! Don't make fun of me! If you can make ends meet on the take-home pay of $2,500, then get out! Hey, what are you doing? My husband brought my stuff from my room and threw it in the doorway. You don't need to be in this house. Get the hell out of my house. Saying that, my husband forced me out of the house. I can't believe it. I didn't realize he had no common sense at all. All right, I will get out. With that, I took the bare minimum of my belongings and left the house. I called my parents and explained the situation. I'm sorry, you've had such a hard time. You can stay as long as you like. My parents were so kind to me that I almost cried. I stayed at my parents' house and had a relaxing time for the first time in a long time. When I woke up the next day, I received many calls from my husband. Hey, where's the key to the safe? The safe? Don't play dumb. It's that safe in your room. You opened my closet? We are a married couple. Do you have something to be ashamed of in there? No, I don't. I'm upset that you opened my closet without permission. I don't care about your personal life. Just tell me where the key to the safe is. I just received a set of golf clubs, and I have to pay for them. That safe is a type that only opens with a pin code. What? There's a keypad on the side of the safe. You have to enter the number on it to open it. Then tell me the number quickly. At this point, I had a nasty thought. No, I won't. What? Hey, you've got to be kidding me. It's none of my business if you are in trouble. Hey, that's enough. You know what happens when you do this. That's my line. I'm at my limit. I'm divorcing you. What are you talking about? Divorce is a given. Are you serious? Of course I am. I'm sick of you. Oh, really? I'm sick of your cluelessness, too. You're going to be in trouble from now on because you're a housewife and don't make any money. I won't forgive you if you come crying to me. I'm not going to do that. Well, I'm hanging up now. I said so, and forcibly hung up the phone. My husband then went through hell. I hired a lawyer through my father's referral, and the divorce was processed through the lawyer. My husband was very upset because he didn't think I was serious about divorce. He was reluctant to divorce until the very end. But when the lawyer told him that we would have to go to court, he suddenly freaked out and signed the papers. Then my husband took off on his own. The golf club bill and the rent bill came at once, and my husband called me in tears. Please, either give me the money or give me the pin number to the safe. Since the divorce was final and the money in the safe was my husband's salary, I gave him the pin. But of course, he couldn't pay for both. So my ex-husband paid the rent and canceled the golf clubs. This made him hated by his bosses, and he lost his chance to get ahead in his career. 
In addition, my ex-husband had no savings, and the credit card bills came in one fell swoop. He had originally saved money because he had stayed at home all the time when he was single, and he had not been concerned about it at all during his previous marriages because his credit card was deducted from his savings when he used it. But when he tried to buy golf clubs, he thought it was strange because he couldn't use his credit card. He later realized that the reason was that there was no more money in his account. He had been using his credit card as usual without knowing that, and he had received a credit card bill for a considerable amount of money. My ex-husband immediately tried to ask his parents for help, but he had explained to them about our marriage and told them that we were getting a divorce. My in-laws apologized for their stupid son and said that from now on, they themselves would no longer spoil him. So they are ignoring my ex-husband without dealing with him when he asks for help. My ex-husband called me crying and asking me to help him as his ex-wife because no one would help him. I told him that I was a stranger now and that he should stop calling me and I hung up and blocked his number. Then I heard a rumor that my ex-husband had quit his job, moved to a place with much cheaper rent, and was living a frugal life while working part-time, and I heard that he regrets his lack of common sense until now. I will never get back with him, but I think it's great that he's reflecting on his past. I hope that from now on, he will have a strong sense of finances and live a life that fits his budget. Meanwhile, I'm living peacefully with my parents while working from home. I told my boss that I would go back to work because of the divorce. But he said, I could choose whichever I wanted, so I chose to work from home. I chose to work from home because I found it easier to concentrate on my work and achieve results. And recently, I have started a second job, which has allowed me to increase my savings quickly. I will continue to work hard and save money to increase my assets and make my life easier in the future. For now, I intend to save enough assets to semi-retire within 5 years.